Hey beautiful people, what is up? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a very, very fun, exciting rankings video. Today I'm gonna be ranking my Blend Bunny palettes for you guys. This is actually the second time that I've ranked my Blend Bunny palettes. The last time I did it was a year ago and since then they've released a number of palettes so my collection has grown significantly. But there's also a very special reason why I'm doing this and that is because on August 31st, my discount code Jamila is going to be double what it typically is. So instead of you guys saving 10% off of your purchase, if you shop on August 31st, you're gonna save 20% off of your purchase on the entire website, no exclusions. Y'all, insert like sparkles and glitter and fireworks here. Okay, I know I'm being dramatic, but I am super excited about this because you guys know that here on my channel, I 100% don't believe in paying full price for makeup, and I try to bring you guys some of the best deals so that you can save a lot of money because I recognize that this is an expensive hobby, but we all love makeup, so any way in which you can be able to partake in makeup at a discount, that's what I try to share. So when Maggie, the owner of Blend Bunny Cosmetics, brought the idea to me at the top of the year about having a day where my discount code would be worth double what it typically is, I was super excited. So I chose August 31st. Now if you're wondering why August 31st, let me tell you. I am Trinidadian. I was born in Trinidad and Tobago. Y'all know I am very, very proud to be Trini. And August 31st is Trinidad's Independence Day, which I thought what better time to celebrate. <laughs> so I chose August 31st because it is Trinidad's Independence Day. It also, fun fact, works out to be the birthday of the owner of Blend Bunny Cosmetics. So it's like a double whammy, which I think is super cool. Now, if you were planning to shop the sale, again, my discount code will be 20% off for the full 20, um, 24 hours, and there are no exclusions. And the reason why I'm doing the rankings is because I want you guys to know what products I actually like slash love from the brand. Now this is just my personal opinion and this is just based on how I've used it and how the products have performed on me. So certainly go with what your spirit tells you to do and definitely be sure to look at other creators to get their thoughts and their experience using the products as well. In addition to me ranking my eyeshadow palettes, I will also talk about some of the other products that the brand has released, like their brushes, their lip oils, all of that, because if you were planning to pick up things other than eyeshadow palettes, I wanna also share some of the other products that they have and that I've used in my collection as well. And finally, my code is still affiliated. So what that means is that if you do choose to shop on the 31st and get that 20% off, I'm still gonna make a commission off of your purchase as well. If you're not comfortable with that, I get it y'all. No fuss, no muss. You just watching this is more than enough support and I appreciate that so very much. Now I don't wanna keep y'all waiting, so let's go ahead and dive right into the ranking. So starting off strong, I'm actually going to be ranking 12 eyeshadow palettes for you guys. There are two palettes that I've chosen not to include in this ranking, and I'll let you guys know why. First and foremost, the Blend Bunny Trove palette, and that's because this is just a quad. It's four multi-chrome shades. This was a palette that they released when they had their Lore palette, and it's more of a companion palette in my opinion, so I don't think that this stacks up well with the rest of the Blend Bunny catalog, which are all larger palettes that include both mattes and shimmers. You can't complete a full look with this. I mean, you can if you wanted to do a one and done, but in my opinion, it just isn't comparable to the rest of the Blend Bunny palettes, so I don't think it's fair for me to include this in the rankings. The second palette that I'm not including is the brand new Little Miss She Never Misses palette. This is the most recent release palette and the one that is in collaboration with Taj, a black content creator who does absolutely phenomenal looks. And the only reason why I'm not including this is because I've only worn it once and that is to create the look that you are seeing today. So I don't have enough experience using this palette to be able to include it or compare it to other palettes. So. I guess I'll just have to come back and do another rankings once I've tried this out a couple more times. So that leaves us with 12 eyeshadow palettes to rank. Some of these palettes have been discontinued and I'll let you guys know which ones are, but that's it. I think those are all of the caveats. So let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, so starting with number 12, this is my least favorite palette from the brand. It doesn't mean it's bad quality or anything, but that is the Forget Me Not palette. And if you have this one, you can probably already tell as to why. And I will be sure to link all of the videos that I have reviewing Blend Bunny products and insert swatches where, um, where I have them so you guys can see what it looks like on my complexion. So forget me not. The reason why this is coming in number 12 is one, it's an eye and a face palette. So this palette was created by Blend Bunny to be a sort of 
full package palette. And by that I mean the shades in here were intended to be used on the eyes and the face. So you, in theory, should have been able to get a complete look outside of complexion. You should have been able to get your bronzer, your contour, your eyeshadow, ev your highlight, everything in this one palette. And it was specifically, in my opinion, marketed towards makeup artists, particularly bridal makeup artists, as like the perfect, complete palette that had everything in it. And this I don't think was appropriate for like the regular consumer for a number of reasons. One, the pans were just so big and as a regular consumer, we're not like typically going in to mix and match and find our perfect contour shade. That's just not what we are doing. So having these giant pans that really required a lot more mixing and matching just wasn't for us. And one of the things that I struggled with when I tried to use this palette was figuring out a bronzer shade. I felt like a lot of the deeper shades which would have been bronzers for me pulled really cool toned so they were showing up as contours on my skin and that's just not that's just not my ministry. And yes, this is perf these are perfect for eyeshadows, but I don't need eyeshadow pans that th that's this large. So I really didn't have a ton of use for it. There's also like a really large, you know, matte white, matte pink. Like the this row of shades wasn't really going to make a ton of sense for me outside of like maybe an eyeshadow context. So in terms of usability and who this is for, I just felt like this wasn't for me. Now, was the formula bad? Absolutely not. It was the same blend bunny mattes and shimmers that you I know and love. So I had no issue with the quality in terms of the formulation. I just felt like it wasn't a palette that was for me or a regular consumer. Coming in at number 11, I have to give it to the Sickly Sweet palette. This palette, I think, shook the blend bunny community for the main reason in that this was not in the traditional blend bunny layout. Now, if you're familiar with blend bunny, you know that Blend Bunny typically has their shadows arranged in a gradient. So from light to dark, with the last row typically being a row of shimmers. All of the Blend Bunny palettes tend to be very matte heavy with just like select shimmers to go along with the mattes. As you can see, this is not that. This was pure chaos. And I think a lot of people were not happy with that because they love the gradient of the Blend Bunny because it kind of gives you a roadmap. If you are not well versed in eyeshadows, and you are a newbie and you want to figure out like, okay, well, how do I start building depth? Everything was laid out. You had a transition shade, two deepening up shades, an outer corner shade. Everything was built for you. So you just needed to follow the row and that or the column, depending on how it was um, laid out, the column or the row. So it made it very, very simple. This was so chaotic <laughs> that I think it threw a lot of people off. I personally didn't like the chaos of it because I like the organization of Blend Bunny's palettes. Um, but I found it to be... A little comical because this was their Halloween release, so it was kind of like, ah, uh, okay, I get it, the trick or treat kind of vibe of this. Um, and the other main reason why this didn't really jive for me is that you can probably tell most of these shades are pastels. Now we do get deepening up shades, so there are opportunities here to take these pastels and make them deeper. But just from like a quantity perspective, most of these are pastels, and if you know me, pastels are not my ministry. Uh, if you are someone with a darker complexion, pastels just take a lot more work to maneuver. You have to have a specific base, you have to pack it on, you can't really blend too much. And I am not qualified or skilled enough to do that. <laughs> like that's exactly what it boils down to because I have seen people with deeper complexions use this palette and create beautiful stunning looks but I just don't have the skills for it so it is not necessarily the palette that I reach for because the layout is a little bit funky and I just don't have like the skills to work with pastels. Now, is this one that challenges me? Yes, and that's one of the reasons why I still do appreciate it because I have, I know what works for me and I'm happy to keep doing that. But whenever I want to challenge and I want to feel a little bit more creative, I reach in for this because I did create one look that I thought was bomb. And I thought it was so good specifically because it's not something that I would have thought on thought about on my own. And I had to think really, really hard. <laughs> about how to put it together in a way where the pastel shades did not show up actually on me. So I had a lot of fun with this, but it, again, it's not my go-to. It's one of those that I have to be in a creative mode to pull it out. Coming in number 10 is actually the first collaboration that Blend Bunny did, and this is the Ellis palette. Now this is with the drag queen, I think their name is Ellis. I'm not 100% sure, but like, this is just so cute. So there's nothing wrong with this palette at all. It's just huge. It is insanely massive. Like it covers my entire face as you can tell. And when you look at it, it's all primary colors. 
And the reason why this one didn't really appeal to me very much is because one of the size of this. I can't tell you how many times I've dropped this palette because it's just impossible to hold this and apply your makeup. Like at a point I was like, apply makeup like this <laughs> because I just couldn't figure out a way in which to hold this with one hand and not have it fall. Like it's felt it's fallen multiple times. Thank God these shadows are sturdy and they did not break. I just think that this is large and not necessarily compact enough for like the regular person. Like if you wanted to travel with this, like this isn't the palette that you're reaching for to travel with it. That being said, if you don't have a big blend money collection, this is the most complete palette I've ever seen. You're gonna get every single color that you could possibly want under the sun here. So if you wanted one rainbow palette to end all rainbow palettes, you're gonna have it here. The other thing too about this palette is that all of the shimmers in this palette are those iridescent shimmers, which means that they are a little bit icy for my complexion. Not necessarily a bad thing, but I do like having some deeper shimmers because I'm a darker complexion. Some of these just show up a little bit icy on me. My favorite shade is actually the Engineer, which is probably the most neutral and least icy shade of the palette. So yeah, it is, I think it's just a preference thing with me and also a, this is unnecessary because if you look at this palette compared to the Blends palette, which is like the OG palette from the brand, it does seem a little bit redundant in my opinion. So if you have Blends, which is smaller, more compact, easier to work with, it just doesn't have any shimmers, I think that this felt like it wasn't necessary in my collection. Coming in at number nine is the palette that I think has the best packaging and that is the Machina palette. Now this is also a very special palette I think for the brand because Maggie created this in collaboration with her dad before he passed. And as someone who's a big daddy's girl, this spoke to my heart in so, so many different ways. Like it just like warmed my heart, made me super fuzzy. And when you look at just the imagery of like this human android mix with like the butterflies and the flowers. It's kind of like Natia and Machine together. And I just loved the design of this. So whoever the artist was, just stunning, insanely beautiful. Really love this. So it has my favorite packaging, uh, but it's ranking a little bit lower because I do think that there were a few flaws in this palette. And I say a few, and really I just mean one. I kind of struggled a little with the shade Sci-Fi. As you can probably tell, it has a, you can see pan in it. And that's because this shade was actually quite squishy. So I struggled to pick this up and apply it to the lids. Even with swatching it, it was a little bit rough for me. Um, but I do love the color story of this. This shade Cyborg, which is this stunning blue, silvery, multi-chrome, insanely gorgeous on the eyes. That being said, this is also a palette that doesn't really offer you the option to go neutral. So I typically like having my palettes give me the option for neutral. The closest thing to neutrality you'll get in this is this column, which is basically silvers. And that's not necessarily my idea of a neutral shade. Overall though, I really enjoyed playing in this palette. I think it is one of those that if you love color, you want something that's a little bit more creative, a little bit bolder, you're gonna absolutely love this one as well. And this one is actually on sale. So this one retails for $45 and is currently on sale for 15. So you would be able to get 20% off of $15, which th there's no beating that price. So if you were interested in this palette, I definitely recommend you check it out. No, especially for the price point. Coming in at number eight is a palette that I want to like, that I keep thinking I should like, because it's such a pretty color story, but somehow I don't reach for it at all really. And that is the Dollhouse palette. Now this is probably the Blend Bunny palette that has the most shimmers. So you have a top row of shimmers and then a bottom row of shimmers. And I think part of the reason why I haven't reached for this as much as I thought I would is because when I got this, I was pretty much an all warm toned girl. This is a very cool toned leaning palette. And I think that at that point in my life when I got this, I was not someone that really leaned into cool tones. But the more that I see this, the more I'm like wanting to dive into this to create looks. Because in addition to it being cool toned, it is also pretty neutral. Like yes, you have a pop of purple and blue and there's like pinks, but I feel like pinks is so neutral adjacent that it still feels pretty neutral. But there is that like standard golds and browns that I think really make this palette neutral leaning. 
And now that I'm really embracing cool tones more, I do think that I'm going to get a lot more use out of this. But I think that this palette is a good option for the one that thinks Blend Bunny might have a little bit too much mattes in it and want a little bit more variety or options when it comes to the shimmers. So this is coming in at number eight. Coming in at number seven is a palette that I didn't expect to like as much and one that I struggled with putting super high because I do think that... There are like some changes that I would make. And that is the Primal palette from Blend Bunny. Now this one is actually discontinued, so you can't get it anymore. I'm sorry. But this, I think, was one of my favorites packet favorite packaging before the Makina one. Because it was just so pretty. And the name, the color store of the palette is just as the name suggests. Primal colors. So you get true reds, true greens, true purples. And that's what I loved about this palette is that you got all of the primary colors, like exactly. Not changing the undertones to make it one way or the other. It was perfect primary colors and that was everything. The reason why this falls a little bit lower is because this palette also included a giant matte black and a giant matte white. I don't know who was asking for it because it wasn't me. But I do not, and I will never need this much black or white. <laughs> and now I'm thinking about it, I know who, who the people that were asking for, for it because a lot of Blend Bunny consumers, the ones that are really, really talented, the ones that are not me, do a lot of really intricate, full face, full body kind of art. And that does take a lot more shadows. So I get it. I get the reason for the matte black and the matte white. But if you're a regular consumer that is only doing basic eye looks like myself, you don't need that much. <laughs> so I would have loved to have more colors. But all of this space was taken up by the matte black and the matte white. But that being said, this was just such a fun color story. And I just like, if I really want a true yellow gold or a true red, this is where I, this is where I come. Because it's like the perfect primary color palette. And that's one thing about the Blend Bunny formula that a lot of people either don't understand or really understand and appreciate is that yes, you will find a lot of the same colors. So you will see reds, you'll see blues, like there are a number of rainbow palettes, but what sets Blend Bunny apart is the nuance between the shades. So each palette might have a purple, but that purple is gonna have a different undertone or a different depth. And that nuance I think is really important for some people, but for others, they don't need that. I don't think that I really appreciated the nuance until I like had multiple Blend Bunny palettes and I realized sometimes you do need a purple shade that's a little bit cooler versus one that's a little bit more like vibrant and like blue leaning. So I appreciate the nuance now but I totally respect people who don't want multiple rainbow palettes and what I do think Blend Bunny offers is that you have a catalog to choose the palette with the shades in the right undertones for you. So if you wanted, you can get things that are more primary leaning or things that are more cool toned or more warm toned. So it does give you the option to figure out what is the perfect rainbow palette for you. Okay, coming in at number six is another discontinued palette. This is the Sugar and Grunge palette from Blend Bunny Cosmetics. Love this one so much. I'm really sad that this is discontinued and I'm hoping that the brand brings it back in a different form. There would, the reason why this is discontinued is because there was a cease and desist for the name. It's a whole thing and rather than try to fight it in court, the owner decided that they were just gonna discontinue the palette. So I'm hoping that this is gonna come back in a different name, different packaging, whatever it is, because this is one of their best color stories. It is, I think, a really great option for fall. I'm sorry, for spring. This is so beautiful. And I do like the shimmers that they chose for this because they're not too deep and they're not too light so that they don't pull super icy on me. Like when I saw this, I was like, oh, this is nice. But when I really started playing in this, I was like, oh, this is nice, nice. <laughs> I don't know why, but I really enjoyed the experience of playing in this palette so much. And I created such fun spring looks with this. This is such a good one. Okay, now we're at the top five. This is the best of the best, the creme de la creme. All except for one are discontinued. <laughs> Wait, yes. All except for one, only one out of the five is discontinued. The rest are all available. Anyways, coming in at number five is the Law palette. This is my baby. This is my heart. I adore this palette so much because I think this makes me look like a mermaid goddess. I don't even know how else to say it. 
These shades are so stinking beautiful. I had the best time playing in this palette. And this is actually Blend Bunny's first foray into multichromes. So in addition to this palette, they brought out the Trove palette that I showed you guys at the top. Uh, so you could either buy, and this one was the first palette that actually included a multichrome. So we had this shade here that was like perfect mermaid goddess multichrome. And it wasn't super icy on me. It was so beautiful. And what I liked about this palette was that even though you have pretty much a colorful palette, pearl with this column here did give you a slightly neutral look. Now, it was not neutral by any means, but it did create something that I thought was a little bit more wearable. So if you didn't want to look like a mermaid goddess, but you wanted something that was neutral leaning with a little pop, this, this was this column right here. And one thing I do want to flag, because you're probably thinking, well, you have this blue, this kind of teal turquoise shade, and then this green. Did they all look the same? No, they actually show up pretty different on the eyes. So there is a lot of nuance to this palette. But if you were someone who doesn't like that teal, blue, purpley, green sort of like color story, you're not going to love this. But I really love this palette, you guys. When I'm feeling fun and funky and want a plain color, I want to, I'm going all in. When I decide I'm doing color, I decide I'm doing color. <laughs> and this was a palette that allowed me to do that. So then coming in at number four is the OG Man Blends. This is the palette that started it. This is the palette that began my obsession with Blend Bunny Cosmetics. At first, everybody had this palette and I couldn't understand why everybody was in love with it. And then <laughs> I bought it and I remember I had it sitting for months. Because I was like, what am I going to do with this? Mind you, I am someone who does not do all matte looks. So an all matte rainbow colorful palette, what was I going to do with it? I bought it out of FOMO because everybody had it and everybody loved it. And then I finally tried it. And for me, it was a like, oh, so this is how matte shadows are supposed to perform. So this is how matte shadows are supposed to blend. And ever since this formulation or blend bunny blends, whatever it is, has become the matte formula that I compare all other matte formulas to. Because this is what showed me how easy it is to create looks if you have a shadow that is blendable. <laughs> Just bare minimum being blendable. So I had a lot of fun with this. And this is a palette that I will oftentimes reach into for just one shade if I'm looking to like add a little pop of color here, whatever the case is. It is still a palette that I use as a companion palette because I do love my shimmer. So I never ever really just do an all matte look. But I will reach into this every now and then to get a specific color, to get a specific shade. And it's just such a good one. If you have struggled with mattes, if you're looking for like just a colorful rainbow matte palette to have ever, all of the colors in it, this is the one that you should try. It's a thousand percent worth it. Okay, we're at the top three and coming in number three is the All Done Up palette. This is... This is so good. Now, <laughs> while I love my colors and Blend Bunny is definitely that colorful palette, y'all know I'm a neutral girly at heart. And when this one came out and Blend Bunny said, oh, we're going to do neutrals. We're going to give you neutrals. They committed. And this palette has been like one of my go-tos whenever I just need a basic neutral look. And the reason why this palette is ranking so high is that not only does this have the neutral colors that speak to my heart on a whole different level, but this is also the palette where Blend Bunny changed their shimmer formula and created the shimmer formula that I'm like, oh, finally. Because <laughs> a lot of the old palettes had a more squishy texture. The shimmers were just not it. I, and I can say that with my whole chest because... Y'all know as much as I love Blend Bunny, I'm going to give you all the good, bad, and the ugly. The old shimmer formula, it was not it. It was squishy. It did not transfer well. It didn't have the shine or the pigment or the impact. This shimmer formula is so, like, finely milled that it isn't super large particles. It's not that creamy, creasy formulation as well. This is actually a little bit more on the dry side, but this gives you so much greater shimmer and shine on the eyes and is, I think, a little bit more refined and a little bit more... I don't want to say mainstream, but a little bit like more unique than other indie shimmers. And I really appreciated that. And I think that these are all of the neutral shades that I like love so very much. So you have warm tones, cool tones, peachy pinky tones, greens, silvers. 
that's it that's all i need so if i ever needed to travel and i needed just a basic neutral look i actually did travel with this for for a bit because this was my go-to so coming in at number two is the serge palette now this is the one in the top five that is discontinued and i'm so sorry you guys because this is one of their best releases because it's so all all encompassing oh my god it's so pretty look at that it's so beautiful and you're probably like why is it in pristine condition it's because this is brand new <laughs> when blend bunny said that they were discontinuing surge i bought a new one for a couple of reasons one because it was being discontinued and this is my number two blend bunny palette but two this palette included the new blend bunny shimmer formula remember i told you all that old shimmer formula was terrible yes so the old Surge palette had the old shimmer formula. This one was the updated formula, and I haven't had a chance to use it yet. I actually have my old Surge palette here so you guys can see. And typically, I don't repurchase palettes because if I have it, I have it. I'm not one to be buying multiples of the exact same thing because I'm never going to pan it. But I was willing to buy this one before the updated formula. So here, let me show you guys both of these together. So we have the old surge, the new surge. And you can probably see the difference in the texture of the shimmers just by looking at it. But I want to bring it in closer so you guys can see how squishy those old shimmers were. Like they weren't the worst shimmers on the market, but I had had better at that point. So I was definitely not reaching for these. Now let's talk about why this is number two, taking the shimmers aside. This is probably the most unique color story because these shades are, shim the, are neons, you guys. Neon eyeshadows. And neon eyeshadows that show up as neon eyeshadows on my complexion. I was just shooketh by the fact that they were neon. <laughs> and not only just the neons, because this top row does actually include pastels. So I felt like there was versatility in this. So you get the deep row that Blend Bunny is known for. They're always going to give you a deep matte row. But then we had pastels at the top. Now granted, if you are lighter complexion, they may show up a little bit more mid-tone on you. But for my complexion, these are pastels. So we have a row of pastels and then we have a row of neons. What more could I ask for? And again, this is the most unique color story that the brand has. So I was like, absolutely must have. And yes, I'm going to repurchase it in this new updated shimmer formula. Because you can still also get neutral looks with this as well. Yes, it is neon. But if you really wanted to, you have this sort of like cool toned beige, a deep brown, yellow gold, or like a champagne gold. That's the basic neutral look there, you guys love this one and i do hope that it comes back in some form from what i understand the brand chose to discontinue it because the neons were becoming too expensive to produce so you know rather than raise the price of the palette they just decided to discontinue it from the catalog and we'll talk a little bit about blend bunny prices in a, in a sec and lastly coming in at number one is the longing palette this is the latest release before the the new collab with um taj and this is just it's everything you guys now part of the reason why this speaks to me is because yes it is really neutral and i'm in my neutral girl era but i also like that this is very heavy on like the sort of greens that are like neutralish greens now granted this is a green heavy palette so if you are not into greens you're not gonna love this but i really love the multi-chrome that they put into this one this shade here when it rains oh my god this is beautiful. They chose such amazing shimmers for this palette. The one thing I will say is that I do wish that they had included a more sort of just neutral brown row because it is so heavy on the greens and you get like the blue, purple, silvery. Like, I wish there was a little bit like just like a brown row. But that being said, this is my favorite palette of, of the moment. And in addition to the the shimmers or the the shades being beautiful this is actually in my opinion an improvement to the all done up shimmer formula when i told you guys that that was like a huge shift where they got this new shimmer formula it really was and then when this came out and i was like these shimmers feel even better that was it that was it i was done so i had a ton of fun playing in this and i think this is the best palette that they have in their lineup currently so if you're looking for one to buy and you like greens, and you're like a little bit more neutral leaning, this is going to be the one. This is going to be the one. 
Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed seeing the rankings of my Blend Bunny eyeshadow palettes. Let's talk a little bit about the price. So you guys already know the discount that you're going to get, but I just wanted to give you guys sort of a understanding of what the Blend Bunny price range is. Blend Bunny is one of the most affordable indie brands that are out on the market right now. The palettes start at around like $36, and the most expensive palette that they have is the Ellis palette, which is the largest palette that they have. I think it's 45 shades. And that one is $66. And I would say that most of their palettes actually fall in that $45-ish, $46 range. There is no like standard price for all of the palettes because you'll re you probably also saw from when I showed you the, the palettes that the number of shades varies in the Blend Bunny lineup. So not all of the palettes are the same size. You don't get the same amount of shades in each palette. So the price does vary. It could be 36, it could be 42, it could be 45, it could be $66. So just something to be mindful of, but I have not seen a palette go above $66, which I think is really great for the brand. That being said, the bulk of their shades are mattes and they rarely ever do multichromes and their shimmers tend to be standard multichromes. So if you are looking for something that has multichromes, this may not be the brand for you, but if you just want some really good mattes and some really good shimmers, I definitely recommend that you check them out because it's a thousand percent worth it in my opinion. And I'm always really excited about Blend Bunny when they release palettes. Now, the palettes is what you're going for, okay? So if you're shopping Blend Bunny, you're going for the eyeshadow. If you know, you know. But they also do have a number of other products. So let me talk a little bit about what else they have that I think you should pick up. Okay, so first thing is the brushes. Now, Blend Bunny has brushes in sets. They don't really have any single brushes, but they have like an eyeshadow, set, an eyeshadow brush set, and then there's another set that includes face brushes. This is the set that I think you should pick up. This is the eyeshadow brush, brush set. And honestly, I'm holding up a ton of them because I have like four or five of these, <laughs> all of which I purchased on my own. Like seriously, I have been buying so many of these Blend Bunny brush sets. Now, I believe this set includes five brushes and the way it's designed is that the color sort of indicates the size of the brush set. So it's like from light to dark and the size of the brush head kind of like increases or decreases. I can't remember which direction. But one of the things about the brush set is that it does seem, it is smaller in my opinion than typical brushes. So if you have hooded eyes, I think you would really enjoy this. Or if you are somebody that likes to be really intricate and do a lot of detailed work, I think that this is a brush set that you would really appreciate. I think that they're really soft for synthetic hair brushes. I prefer natural hair brushes generally, but I reach for my Blend Bunny brushes a ton when I really, really need like a small, tiny, detailed brush, and I don't have any issues with it being irritating. Now the best part about it is that this brush set technically retails for $32. It's currently on sale for $15 as of me filming this video, which means that you would get 20% off of $15. Trust me, buy the brushes. Just, just believe me on this one. <laughs> the next thing that I want to recommend is the Blend Bunny Lip Oils. When I tell you guys I have like a slight obsession with these lip oils, this is only some of the ones that I have. But as you can tell, this one is empty, this one is halfway done, this one is halfway done. Y'all, these lip oils are amazing. One, I do think, I think they do an amazing job at just like hydrating the lip, making sure that it's nice and juicy and plump. And secondly, they work really well in my opinion as lip masks. If you wanted like a lip mask at night, but you thought the ones where you have to like dip your finger in can be a little bit too thick, I find these are really good as lip masks. And I've also even seen people take the clear lip gloss and put a little bit of like highlight or some kind of shimmer or color in there and create their own lip, lip oil um, color, which I think is super duper cool. My favorite is actually Love Bite. Clearly, this one is empty, so I will probably end up be purchasing <laughs> purchasing one of those. Now, the good thing as well is that that is currently on sale for $7. I think the black one is even cheaper. I think it's $6. But the lip oils typically retail for $12. They're on sale for $7, and you're going to get 20% off on top of that. And if you couldn't tell, this is a giant tube. So you're getting a very good amount of product which should also tell you how much I've used this considering how much product is in here. You get 21 ounces or six grams. That's a lot of product. The next product that I wanna recommend is actually the Lash Perfect or the Omni Lash Mascara. This was a relatively new release for the brand. I remember when they launched this, it kinda launched on its own and the 
Pro Moffat was like, it's just a good mascara, y'all. It really is just a good mascara. <laughs> and that's what it boils down to. I believe the original price of this is $13, and it's currently on sale for $8. I'm going to be picking up a couple of these because this is so good. It does a great job at, in my opinion, giving volume and length, and it doesn't flake off. I think that my biggest con ab about this is because this is an hourglass wand, I do struggle a little bit with the lower lash line, but it's perfect for the upper lash line. I'm wearing it right now. I'm currently scraping the edges to get whatever is left of this. So I'll probably pick up one or two um, new uh, uh, lash mascaras because this is one of my absolute favorites. And I think it's quite affordable considering drugstore. <laughs> Drugstore, it's on par with drugstore pricing, considering what, where drugstore pricing is now. And lastly, I want to flag two more products. I don't know if I would necessarily recommend these, but I do want to flag them anyway. So first is the Noctilucent palette. Most people I know like this. I'm clearly an outlier when it comes to this palette. So just, I'm telling you about this because from what I understand, most people like it. I'm just the only one that doesn't. It's a highlighter palette. It's one of those highlighter palettes where... The shades are like translucent, but a different kind of flip. So this is probably the deepest one, but this one flips green, this flips gold, this flips blue. So it's like these translucent shades. I just find that it gets dirty because of like my foundation when I dip my brush in there. I just had a couple of issues with this and I wasn't in love with the formula of this. It's not bad. I actually think I would use this more as eyeshadows than as a highlighter. Um, and also like because these are those sort of like translucent um, shades this is a little bit icy for me in my opinion so I I think that that's part of the reason why I didn't love this but most people I know do so I would say look at the people that like it <laughs> and just see if like I'm missing something the next two products I actually do like and that is the blush palette so they released two blush palettes, the first one being Bare Cheeks and the second one being Juicy Cheeks. My recommendation is actually the Bare Cheeks because as you can probably tell, this is more of the standard blush shades and you get like a lighter shade and a deeper shade because in true Blend Bunny format, you can deepen it up to get the perfect depth that you need. And for me, this is just like sort of wearable everyday blush shades. What I was surprised that I want I wanted a little bit more like shimmer in there so like th these are all mattes um uh, but I would have liked like a, just like a hint of sparkle in this um especially if we're getting like a light and dark maybe it would have been nice to have like one of these have a little bit of shimmer in there but these are all matte blushes so if you don't like all matte blushes you might not like this technically speaking I prefer matte blushes to shimmer blushes and I do recommend the bare cheeks one the most if you are someone that just wants a neutral leaning option and I think that this actually works particularly well with my complexion and with warmer skin tones now juicy cheeks on the other hand this is for the adventurous person so this was not my favorite because I just don't know how to be this adventurous so as you can tell these are very very out there vibrant blush shades and I was just a little bit scared to use this still am if I'm being honest so this is one that I don't reach for because I'm just very afraid I don't know how else to explain it. That being said, it is a really nice formula. It applies well. It blends well. Standard Blend Bunny MO. So I definitely recommend you check out the blush palettes if you're interested. These are also on sale. The original price was $36 and I believe they're $32 and they're on sale for $26. So you would get 20% off of $26 and that's 8 shades. Like 8 blush shades. Perfect for travel. Perfect for mixing and matching it so you can create your own custom blushes. Okay, so that's it, you guys, for this video. That's all I wanted to share in terms of my ranking of my Blend Bunny palettes and what other products are a part of the Blend Bunny catalog in case you were interested in shopping and checking it out. Like I said at the beginning of the video, August 31st is Jamila's day. So on August 31st, for 24 hours, you are going to be able to save 20% off by using my discount code Jamila. It is affiliated. I will get a small commission. And of course, all of that goes back into supporting this channel and supporting my work. And most importantly, nothing is, is excluded in this sale. So everything is included, including the sale items. So that means that you can save extra on the products that are already discounted. So y'all know what to do. As always, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know down in the comments below if you have a favorite Blend Bunny palette or if there's something you plan on picking up in the sale or if you have any questions about how any of these products perform. 
happy to answer all of those questions. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you all so much more than you know, and I'll catch you in my next one. Bye!